we're coming on the holiday season, and I don't know about you, but I like to bake an awful lot of cookies at this time of year for family and friends. But I also don't want to forget about the pets that we have. Today I'm going to be making dog cookies because I have dogs and I, I'm a dog lover. We're going to be making these little cookies, which are pumpkin, peanut butter, and oats. Very easy to make and very delicious for your dogs, very healthy. And we're also going to make dog-friendly gingerbread cookies. There's no cloves and there's no nutmeg in here, which are not good for dogs, but there is cinnamon and there is ginger. So why don't we get baking and I'll show you how to make a couple of simple, good treats for your dogs. I'm going to use a food processor today to make the cookies instead of a mixer. And you might say, why? Well, because I have a cup of oats and I want to grind them up into a fine flour. So I'm going to put the oats into the, mix, into the uh, food processor and I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm going to grind this up now until I have a fine flour. So pardon the noise. That's good. Now to that I'm going to add a third of a cup of peanut butter, I mean uh, pumpkin. And not pumpkin pie filling, just pure pumpkin. You can find it in any store, especially at this time of year. And then I'm going to add a quarter cup of smooth peanut butter. Now be careful with your peanut butter. If you buy a known name brand, you're going to be okay. If you start buying generics, you might run into a problem. There's some of them use something called xylitol, X begins with an X, xylitol, and that's an artificial sweetener that they use in some peanut butters, toothpaste, some yogurt, and maybe even chewing gum. Highly toxic to dogs, so you don't want to make, you want to make sure, read your label on your peanut butter. I used one of the most famous ones on the market here, and I know it doesn't have xylitol in it. So now that those are in, we're going to mix this up until it forms a dough. How easy was that? Okay. Now, get rid of this stuff. Real simple. Got some flour here. Throw some flour on the table. I'll get this out first. This recipe is this is a single recipe. If you want to double this, doubles beautifully. It even triples beautifully. If you really wanted to make a big batch and you wanted to use your mixer, just grind the, the, the uh, oats in the food processor and then you use your mixer. Here we go. This is not going to make a ton of cookies. Like I said, this is just a single batch. This is for the three dogs in the house that just love their cookies. My oven's on at 325 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to, after we cut these out, we're going to bake them in that 325 degrees for about close to a half an hour, maybe longer. Depends on how crispy you want them and how thick you cut them. Now I have some little cookie cutters here. I've got a Christmas tree and I've got a teddy bear. You can choose anything you want. If you don't have cutters, just cut it with a knife and make squares. Whatever. And I'm just going to place them on a cookie sheet. Oop, I broke that one. It helps, and I'm not doing it, but I will now. It helps if you take a cookie cutter and run it in the flour each time you cut a cookie. They'll come out a lot nicer. Uh, then otherwise, you'll get jagged edges. And these are so cute. When you're done with these, you can serve them just like this, or you can make some royal icing and frost them. Okay. These also freeze very nicely, so if you make a whole bunch of them 
and you can pack them in the freezer and just pull out what you need and they'll defrost in a matter of minutes. I'm just going to gather this up and I'm just going to keep rolling until I use up all the dough. I think I can squeeze one more cookie out of here. Maybe even one more. These are not going to last long with our dogs. But at least you know what's going into them, and so you're not making them something that's got a lot of preservatives and other crap in it. Okay. There we go. Now I'm also going to take these pieces, just put these on here, because you know, the dogs really won't care what shape they are. So, there we go into my 325 degree oven for th about 30 minutes. I'll start checking at 25 and then I'll show you what they look like when they're done. Here are our peanut butter pumpkin dog cookies all done out of the oven. They were in for just over 30 minutes, about 31 minutes and they're nice and set up. They're not terribly brown. If you want an extremely crunchy cookie you could have left these in the oven, turned off the heat, and left them in there for maybe another 15 minutes, and they would get even crisper. But these are pretty good. They're going to get crispy as they sit on the pan. So like I said, these freeze very nicely. After they're completely cooled, if you want to, you can decorate them. You know, you want to put some white zigzags on it or something. If you're going to do that, you can use white candy melts, or you can make just a confection of sugar and milk frosting and zigzag it. Stay away from white chocolate or dark chocolate, as I'm sure you know if you're a dog owner that those are toxic to animals, to dogs, anyway. I found these last year after the holidays at a discount store and I paid practically nothing for them. But they're these cute little boxes that you can buy with a tag, a little bone, and they have seals that you can seal up the top. And you can fill these with your dog cookies, and these are great gifts for friends and family. So I hope you try these. I know your dog's going to love them. In my mixer bowl, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. You can use whole wheat flour or actually any other flour that you have, but I'm using all-purpose today. And in it, I'm going to put a quarter of a teaspoon, or half, excuse me, half a teaspoon of ginger and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, in normal gingerbread cookies like you and I would eat, we might add some clove and some nutmeg. Both of those are very toxic to dogs, so don't add them in here. Now, what we have here is half a cup of canola oil, a half a cup of molasses, dark molasses, or you can use dark corn syrup. I've got one egg, and I've got a little bit of water on the side because sometimes this dough is very dry and crumbly and you don't you want it to have a, you want to be able to roll it out if it's all crumbly you can't roll it out so you can add a little bit of water so to this here goes my egg my oil and my molasses like molasses, slow as molasses, as, as the saying goes. And that's exactly it. I always pour in just a little bit extra because some of it gets left behind inside the cup. Now, onto the mixer. And we're just gonna mix this up. Now, 
now. It's coming together nicely, but it's just a little bit too dry. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of water. And I wanna mix it well. I want it really to get well blended. Now, when this is done, I'm going to take it off the mixer, wrap it in plastic wrap, and then put it in the refrigerator for about half hour or an hour. It just makes it easier to roll out later. It smells like gingerbread. It's that molasses. Okay. There we go. There's our dough. Like I said, I'm going to just wrap this up in plastic wrap, put it in the refrigerator, and then after it's chilled up a bit, I'll come back and roll it out for you. Our gingerbread for pups is out of the refrigerator. It's chilled. It's not really all that cold. You could have left this, or I could have, but you can. Make it the night before and roll it out the next day. Again, you would have to leave it at room temperature for a, a short period of time, just till it got a little bit warmer. Otherwise, it's gonna be like a rock. But you could always do this, and that softens it up. And it crackles, but you know what? Your dog won't care. My oven is on 325, I think just a little bit more. And again, after I cut, you can roll them again, keep rolling the dough. So I'm gonna make some, of course, gingerbread people. And these can be decorated with royal icing, just like humans gingerbread. And these are going to bake in 325 for about, I would say 20 to 25 minutes. Again, you could leave them in longer if you wanted to, to uh, crisp up even more. That's got a big crack in it, so we're just going to re-roll it. much stiffer than gingerbread you would make for humans. But it's still really good. The dogs will love it. And these again, if I, I forgot if I mentioned them, but you can freeze these very nicely. Just put them into freezer quality zippy bags get as much air out of it as you can and freeze them. I'll do some trees. And you just keep going along until you've used up all your dough and pop them in the oven. there we go. Now we'll pop these two trays into the oven. Again, about 20, maybe 25 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes. We'll just wait and see. You could pick them up and if they, if they hold their shape and they just feel stiff, you'll know they're done. Here are cookies out of the oven. They smell wonderful, just like gingerbread. 
And your dogs are gonna love these. These are very hot. I'm just gonna let them cool down. Again, they can be frozen. You can decorate them with either candy melts or uh, royal icing, or you can leave them plain. So I hope you try these, and I hope your dog loves them.